Howdy friends, Brian Flessig of Mad River Outfitters in the Midwest Fly Fishing Schools and welcome back to another one of our Q&A series. It's summer 2019, we're getting ready to hit the road for summer travel season. We've got Alaska, Montana, the Amazon, New Mexico, New Orleans, uh, all coming up on me so I got to get as many of these in as I can. As always, stay tuned, we'll have updates from all of those trips coming at you. Uh, you can always go to the website and learn more about our hosted fly fishing trips here at Mad River Outfitters. So let's jump right in. We'll do a real quick one here. And we've got uh, Matt Hayes, who is hails from Lexington, Kentucky, just south of us here. Uh, Matt says, hi guys, thanks for all the help that you give and I always enjoy the videos. My question is about repacking a leader after use. I always try to use, uh, to use to do reverse procedure of unpackaging. When I try to get the leader back into plastic, it ends up in a mess. Any tips or tricks? Yeah, I'll show you what, uh, what I do. Also, I always question myself on leader selection because I'm unsure of the size of fly in, of each fly in my box. Any insight to help? Yes, Matt. So first of all, um, here's what I would do, Matt. Get yourself, first of all, get yourself a leader wallet, okay? And uh, this is the most popular one we sell, which is made by Rio, okay? And it has these little Ziploc baggies, which somewhat resemble the leader packages. Now, these things are big enough, uh, the little Ziploc baggies are big enough that you can fit the entire leader package in there no problem it'll slide right in and you can have your all your leaders all lined up like little soldiers ready for battle um, but what i do is i i've taken one of our little uh, labels that we use here at the shop um, to put on you know to put on the back of an item and i've put labels on there and then i marked with a permanent marker what each little Ziploc pouch is going to contain. For example, if it's a nymph leader, if it's a dry fly leader in 5X or 6X, I'll mark that. And with one of these uh, Rio leader wallets, I've got plenty of slots to cover most of the leaders that I would need. Um, and really, to be honest with you, you're only going to need a selection of leaders if you're trout fishing. Um, another good option is uh, Vitavu. Our good friends at Vitavu have a nice looking, well made leader wallet. And this is a situation where you can just kind of, again, slide them in here in the package or out of the package. I usually don't save the packages um, and slide them in here. This is great. It doesn't have as many compartments, um, it basically has two different compartments. But if you're, say, if you're a smallmouth bass fisherman, if you're a largemouth bass fisherman, you're probably only going to use one type of leader, say a very stiff butt second that's tapered down to 12 or 13 thousandths. And then I may have a few leaders um, for, say, bluegill fishing. If you want to have your bass leaders here at 12 or 13 thousandths, your bluegill leaders here at 1x or 2x on the tippet, well, well, there you go. Bought a book, bought a bing. Great little setup here in the Vita Vu leader wallet. Although you can also jam a bunch of leader packages in here, carry a bunch of them. Um, and it is a little bit, uh, I kind of like the size of that. It certainly fits into a vest pocket or a lot of your sling packs very easily. This can be a little bit big and if you get it pretty jammed, it can be a little fat. Uh, but there's two great options, uh, the Rio leader wallet and then the Vitavu leader wallet, which comes in camo or olive. Of course, you can find those at madriveroutfitters.com. But your question, Matt, is this. Um, you have, when you pull a leader out of a package, and it sounds to me like you know how to do this, but there's some people out there that don't. I put it in my fingers like this, okay? I've got my thumb index, middle, and my ring finger inside the loop. And I, I take the butt section, which is the thickest part and has the loop tied in the end of it, and I'm simply gonna start to undo the coils, okay? And you wanna make sure that you get all of the coils 
out of there. And then once you do that, this is just going to come spiraling right off and you should avoid getting that tied in knots or getting it tangled. Okay. And then it's going to be not a bad idea to, if you own a leader straightener, you take that leader straightener and you run the leader through it. I don't use a leader straightener very often. I kind of just run it through my fingers as such. Just make sure you don't burn your fingers in doing this. I often tell people, yeah, you can buy a leader straightener. That's great. We sell a ton of them. But I was born with leader straighteners on the ends of my hands. And I just pull it through. And the heat from your fingers is going to heat up that um, leader enough to where you take the coils out of it. Okay. You run it through your fingers as such. And you'll see it's going to take the coils right out of there. Um, this leader is going to cast a lot better. It's going to perform a lot better. Just run it through your fingers or your leader straightener if you own one and you're all set. Uh, loop it on or tie it on to the tip of your fly line and fish. And then when you need to change leaders, which is going to be occasionally, of course, or you, you for whatever reason, you just need, you're going to take that leader off unloop it. I'm sure we have a video linked right there on how to loop your leader onto the tip of your fly line. Um, you take this off and now you don't want to necessarily throw it away. You certainly don't want to throw it down on the ground. You want to put it somewhere. So put it in your leader wallet or put it back in the package that it came with. Start by the tip it. Okay. And I go around, try to get it around a similar diameter as it came out of the package. Okay. And just wrap it around. And then once you get maybe eight or 10 inches from the end of it, the loop, now start to repeat those coils. Just come around almost like I used to do when I used to play music and have to plug instruments in. I would coil up my cables as such. Okay. And now it's not going to come springing apart on you. And you can stick it back in its original package or in the appropriate compartment in your leader wallet. Okay. So just re reverse the process. Start with the tippet and wrap it around about eight or 10 inches from the butt section. Just start, start wrapping that around. So it holds it in place and it doesn't, doesn't come springing out on you and on loop sticker back in the package. There's my other one and I'm ready to go and you can reuse that leader. Okay. I think a lot of people do waste leaders because of that exact same thing. And if you just learn how to do that and you keep them somewhat organized and you label them or put them back in the original package, which tells you what it is, I think you're going to save quite a bit of money over the long run. And then your next question is you're unsure of the size of fly of each fly in your fly box. Any insight to help? Yes. Get yourself one of these. It's called the Griffin Hook and Hackle Gauge. Uh, for now, this will suffice, but stay tuned. We've got a Mad River Outfitters brand product coming your way that'll help with this. But in the meantime, get yourself the Griffin Hook and Hackle Gauge. It currently sells for $6.15. And there is a handy little gauge on here. And you can take the size of fly, lay it up along there, and whichever hook gap it matches up to, that's going to tell you the size of the fly. Remember that this is really most important when it comes to trout fishing, where you might be fishing some large flies, some medium sized flies and some small flies. If you get up into bass fishing, smallmouth fishing, streamer fishing, saltwater fishing, it's all going to be basically the same big fat tippet. 11, 12, 13, maybe even 15 thousandths on your tippet. Okay, so you're not going to be as worried about matching it uh, uh, when it comes to those really big, heavy, wind resistant flies. If you're a trout angler and you've got some big flies, some medium flies, and some small flies, get this, carry it in your vest, carry it in your kit bag, pull out your hook, match it up, and then of course match it to the proper diameter of tippet. Uh, for those of you that don't understand how to match your tippet size to the fly size, go back to episode nine on our Getting Started in Fly Fishing program. So there you go, Matt. 
appreciate it. Great, great question. We're going to cut it off there. And uh, as always, we appreciate you all tuning in. Matt, we'll send you out that hat in the fly box immediately. As soon as we cut the camera, it's going to be on its way, on a train probably, on its way to you. So um, look for that in your mailbox. Appreciate you being here. As always, send your questions to admin at madriveroutfitters.com. We'll try to get to them as quick as we can. And please stay in touch and stay tuned. Oh, and smash the like button. Just smash it. If you like this video, hit subscribe. It helps out a lot. And check out these videos. We think you might like them too.